but there's a lot of conversation on um, the LGBTQIA plus community, on race, on um, feminism. When Kate goes missing, Jeanette completely changes her look. Jeanette does everything in her power to look like Kate. You watch the, their dynamic. You watch how they're really, really awkwardly placed. You know, how they got this job. They are very, very different from one another, but they're very good at what they do. He has personalities that live within him. Okay, so he's got 23 personalities that live in within him and he calls him the horde hey everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video thank you so much for being here as always thank you so so much for choosing me over and over and over and over again i am so excited to film this video i'm so excited to film this video because i haven't done it in a while and you will not believe the amount of times i get asked or what are you currently watching would love to know what you're watching on instagram and on x so if you're not following me on there definitely follow me on there because sometimes i'll give recommendations of what i'm currently watching or i'll give a little tiny review of what i've been watching and what i think about it so i'm very 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 excited to do this one and you can see in the title down below that it's not just netflix this time these are my recommendations recommendations on Netflix and Prime and I'm so 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 uh, I've been watching a lot of stuff on Prime that I'm really really excited to share with you and again <clears throat> Before we get into it, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. If you like the video after you've watched it, please like and subscribe and join the JK space and join the JK family. If you want me to do more reviews of what I am currently watching, definitely let me know and I will make sure that I put these kinds of videos on rotation like I do with Candid with Cat or Unpopular Opinions or Controversial Trending Topics. I haven't filmed this one in a really long time and if there's one thing that you will catch me doing it's watching a tv because why because i'm sitting in the house when i'm in the house i'm watching tv when i want to unwind i'm either reading or i'm watching tv so i'm really excited to share some of the shows series and movies that i have uh, started watching or that I have gone back to or that I have just binged watched over the last couple of months I don't remember when the last one was so sorry about that sorry about that mate but it's it's gonna be a good time All right. it's gonna be a we're on prime okay the first one I'm going to share with you is one that I've spoken about on X quite a bit on Twitter X quite a bit it's Harlem and I'm gonna put it here and <laughs> I loved the show so much that even when I started watching it I was like okay I'll give it a shot you know it's got Megan Good Megan Good is not necessarily my favorite actress in the world but I appreciate some of her stuff you know what I'm saying but I have a new more even fonder appreciation for her now after Harlem and the cast of women that are in this series as well i do not know their names okay and i apologize for that but they are fantastic they are so good all of them are made for each of the roles that they play so i really really love it so you follow camille megan good who is a lecturer at a a college or a university in Harlem and you follow her life along with the lives of her friends Quinn, Ty and I forget the other friend I will put her name in editing because she's actually my favorite character the one who's got a bit of body I love her so much she's so funny so funny I can't I, I'm so mad that I can't remember her name but we follow their relationship we follow their friendship and their lives it's it's sort of like a black version of sex and the city but it's not 
You hear my chat? So you just, in the sense that you are following the lives of these four girlfriends who are living in and around Harlem and they come from different walks of life. Camille is a lecturer and Ty is a app designer she oh she has this app where it's like a dating app but it's a dating app for uh, members of the lgbtqia plus community and it's so nice and then you've got quinn who is a designer and she comes from a wealthy family and you've got this other one who's my favorite one and i'm so mad at myself that i don't remember her name but she's an actress and you follow their lives and how they meet up every day and their relationships but i love how it tackles um the the the, the bond between girlfriends like if you don't have girlfriends and you want to have girlfriends please make it an active thing that you go out and you try and make friends and i wish for the best that you find great girlfriends because There'll be no relationship in life that you will have that'll top that relationship that you have with your girlfriends. I truly mean that. I truly mean that. But we follow their lives. We follow their relationships. But there's a lot of conversation on um, the LGBTQIA plus community, on race, on um feminism a lot of conversation on the working environment and how it treats women of color oh my god i absolutely loved it they go on trips together it's so good it's so good but i think the meat of it for me is the conversations on race class gender listen uh lgbtqia plus sexuality right Ah, relationships, it's really good. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's so good. Ah, it's so good. It's so good. Next up is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. No, not the movie. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the series. And it's on Prime. It's got, um, not Donald Glover, but his surname is Glover. Ugh. I'll put it here. The son. Yeah. Oh, the artist slash... Uh, he, he sings it's Donald Glover because I think Danny Glover is, is the older actor. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You follow him. It's exactly like the concept of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the movie. However, in this one, you, you watch how they get the job that they get where they have to assassinate, uh, influential and controversial, uh, figures well-known figures that are influential but also very controversial as well you watch how john smith it's john and jane how john gets the job that he gets and he meets up with jane and how they end up living in the house that they live in and you watch the their dynamic you watch how they're really really awkwardly placed you know how they got this job they are very, very different from one another, but they're very good at what they do. And you watch their relationship unfold. It's action packed. It's so nice. And the relationship that they have where they actually really hate each other, but they end up really, really loving each other. It's great. It's great. But it tackles a whole lot of subjects as well. I really love watching shows that are quite complex at their base as well. You know, it's nice to watch something that's actiony and that's romance and whatever. But I love stories and series, movies that are also quite complex at their base. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith tackles a lot of um, subjects about family, familial relationships and trauma, mental health very big, uh, but it's also covered in action-packed and, oh, it's so good, it's so good. I watched it in like two days. It's really, really good, it's really, really good. Um, then for a good time, Two Broke Girls. I'm sure some of you guys may have seen it or watched it already. Um, this for me is a really big, cozy watch. It's like when I wanna watch, have something going in the background that is funny, that I love, much like Modern Family, The Big Bang Theory, all of this, two, two Broke Girls was around that time as well. And in this one, we follow Max and Caroline. And they meet when Caroline, who is a socialite, who comes from a disgraced, very wealthy 
family that is set up in Manhattan when her father gets arrested and everything gets taken from them. Caroline is forced to relocate to Brooklyn where she needs to find a job, she needs to find a place to stay, all of this. And she finds herself working at this cafe and she befriends Max and they end up living together. Max is dark, she's funny, she's sarcastic. She is me in a nutshell. The stuff that you don't get to see. But she's great and the dynamic between the two, the friendship that they create because they work for this cafe or this coffee shop, but they want to start their own cupcake business. But they always find themselves broke because things happen when they try to save money. Things happen that will force them to spend the money, which in turn takes back the amount of time that they have to start this cupcake business. But it's really, really good. The side characters are really funny as well. Han, Han, <laughs> it's really, really good. It's really, really good. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's going to become a cozy read, a cozy watch for you. Mm. Next is Fleabag. Now, Fleabag is not for kids. It's also a very dark comedy where you follow this uh, protagonist. I forget her name, but she is, you know, when we talk about unlikable characters, she is just a horrible person. She is horrible horrible she is she's she's a thief she's she's horrible to her boyfriend who is really good to her she's just promiscuous when she doesn't have to be and we follow her life where she is running again a cafe she runs it but it's not doing well and she constantly needs to be borrowing money from her sister so that she can keep the cafe open and all of that and we follow her life and the string of lovers that she has and how she always uh goes back to this ex who treats her really really well but she treats him very badly and eventually he's just like no nah, I'm, I'm, I'm done with you i'm done with you but it's dark it's not for kids there are some scenes in in it and things that are said and all of that that are um just definitely not for kids i think definitely have to be above 18 i'd like to say to watch it but it's so good it's so good again it also tackles uh concepts like mental health as well it tackles concept of uh concepts of sexuality because there's this it's good just just <laughs> just watch it but i swear this one i think it might not be for everybody some people might like it some people might not but um i love it it's dark it's sarcastic satire it's really really good it's really really good and the last series that i have for you for prime is called cruel summer and in cruel summer we follow the quintessential american high school girlies now this one is a dark one it's not funny it's a it's it's a little bit psychological as well really dark uh tackles subjects like abduction tackles subjects like mental health tackles subjects like trauma it tackles a whole lot of dark stuff okay dark stuff we follow kate and Jeanette. And Kate is the quintessential, beautiful, blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl who is in high school. She's like 16, 17, and she is loved. Do you hear my chat? She is absolutely, absolutely loved at her school. She has got the quarterback boyfriend. She is very smart. She's got a lot of friends. She's the popular girl. She's just the popular girl, okay? And then you have Jeanette who's not the popular girl. Jeanette is a bit nerdy. She's got braces. She's very awkward. Um, people don't like her. They tease her. They make fun of her. They bully her, all of this. But Jeanette has this weird fascination and obsession with Kate. Until one day, Kate goes missing. When Kate goes missing, Jeanette completely changes her look. Jeanette does everything in her power to look like Kate. She wants Kate's life. She changes her hair to look like Kate's. She gets Kate's boyfriend. She listen, she becomes the popular girl at school. So much so that people start to think that Jeanette may have something to do with Kate's disappearance. And then it unfolds from there. Really good, really dark. But not too, not, not that dark. It's like drama uh, with a little bit of a psychological thrill to it. It's really nice. I enjoyed it and I highly recommend that you watch it. Movies. Oh, split. 
I'm going to start with Split. This is Split, where uh, starring James McAvoy. James McAvoy is Kevin in the movie, and Kevin struggles with dissociative identity, dissociative identity disorder, DID, where essentially this means that he has alter ego, he has personalities that live within him. Okay, so he's got 23 personalities that live within him and he calls them the horde, right? Kevin Wendell Crumb, my goodness, Kevin Wendell. Okay, so he is at the precipice of unleashing the 24th identity. The horde wants to unleash the 24th identity, but Kevin doesn't want Kevin doesn't want. So these 23 alter egos, 22 alter egos of Kevin want to release the beast. The beast is the 24th identity. And things start happening where girls are abducted and these three girls are taken by Kevin to become sacrifices for the 24th identity. And things happen. And it's really good. It's complex, it's very nuanced, it explains mental health, it, it really goes into dissociative identity disorder really well. It explains it so well. So there's a lot of talk about trauma, about mental health, um, and about how your mental health can truly impact who you become, what you become, and all of that. But at the same time, it's full of action. It's full of a good time. It's vibes. It's vibes, bro. It's really, really good. And it's got action and, ah, it's so nice. It's so nice. And the acting of James McAvoy in this is, I don't even know if you want an Oscar for it, because if he didn't, why? They're rude. They're absolutely rude, but phenomenal. He does it so well. How he switches between his identities. One's Barry, one's, like, one is an artist within him. One is an artist, one is a nine-year-old boy. One is a very complex woman by the name of Patricia. Dog. It's nice. And um, he does a sequel to Split, which is called Glass. And in Glass, we have an introduction, also very, very good. We have an introduction of extra characters, so it's not just James McAvoy. We've got Bruce Willis, and we've got Samuel L. Jackson, and we've got Sarah Patterson, I think, if I'm not mistaken. All of them do a stellar job. Of course they do. Of course they do. What do you even mean? Okay, All of them do a stellar job. Just watch Split first. I'm not going to explain Glass, but if you want to watch it, Split and Glass are on Netflix and Prime, and they're very, very good. Very, very good. Saltburn is on Prime. <laughs> In Saltburn, we follow a kid. The name of the actor is Barry, Barry Coogan, I think. And he plays the role of Oliver in Saltburn. And Oliver is a young kid who is 16, maybe. And he is lucky and fortunate and smart enough to be accepted into Oxford. 17, maybe. I don't know. He's accepted into Oxford. And when he gets to Oxford, he makes friends with a guy by the name of... I forgot his name. But I think his real name is Jacob somebody. Okay, anyway, so they become friends and Barry, Oliver, seems to get a very big fascination, obsession with Jacob, the other character. And Jacob comes from a very wealthy family. And so one summer, the kids are going on a summer break and Jacob asks Oliver, yo, bro, what are you going to do? What are you going to do during the summer break? And Oliver's like, no, nah, I think I'm going to stay here on campus, bro. I don't know. And Jacob's like, what? No, come with me to the Saltburn estate, my family's estate, because we're rich. <laughs> he doesn't say that. But we're rich, so we got more than enough room for you. I know I can't, but this was actually his plan. This was actually his plan. He wanted to befriend Jacob because he's got some sort of obsession with him or wants to be like him or wants his life. Who knows? And then they go to Saltburn and this is where things unravel. And Oliver gets introduced to Jacob's mom, dad, sister and a cousin. And 
Oliver creates absolute havoc. Havoc. This movie drove TikTok insane, and this is the reason why I watched it. Um, again, there's com complex themes there of class, of identity, uh, of um, social class. I mean, in terms of you know wealth, the wealthy and how they behave. It's matter on dance floor. Just watch the movie. The movie is really good, but it's not for kids. There's very, very dark things that happen in that movie that had even me go, what, what, what Oliver? There's like a bathtub scene, a graveyard scene. <sighs> Just watch it. It's really good. Mental health as well is a very good complex uh, subject that is discussed in this movie as well. Uh, without physically being discussed, it's in the background. It's there, you know. Loved it. So that's what I've got for you on Prime. I think also another one that you should watch if you already haven't is Get Out with Daniel Kaluuya. Really great movie um, directed and written by Jordan Peele. And if you know who Jordan Peele is, then you know. You know, you know he did Get Out. He did Not, Not, Not With Us. No, Us. Us, I think, with Lupita Nyong'o. And... Uh, this guy from Black Panther, man. I love him so much. Uh, the guy was who had like a like a Nigerian accent. Uh, uh, ah, he's, he's in Black Pan Panther, man. The big guy. Oh, love that guy. I oh, love that guy. Anyway, uh, he's in Us as well. And they're both directed by Jordan Peele. Get Out is fantastic. Uh, great, great commentary on there about class, racial uh, identity. Racial topics as well, the divide between black and white. Um, and he does it really well in how he formulates the story. It's really, really good. It's really good. It's frightening, but it's really good. They are classed as horrors, I suppose, maybe complex horrors kind of thing. And But it's really good. It's really good. Really good. All right, moving on to Netflix. Maybe I should leave this video... I'm going to leave this one here because I think on Netflix I've got a few as well. So I'm going to leave this one here because it's long enough as it is. Um, and then I'm going to do one for Netflix as well. And then I'll post them probably on the same day for you guys to watch and enjoy. Uh, but yeah, this one is long enough. So I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one where we talk about the Netflix recommendations. These are the ones on Prime. If you enjoyed uh, this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. If there's something else that's on Prime that you have watched and you highly recommend that I watch, please let me know down below. I would really appreciate that as well. Until the next video, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. I will see you in the next one. Sayonara.